I've officially had this rig for just over a year now. I think it's time we do a review. Now, if you guys have been following along on the channel for a while now, you're probably well aware that one year is a really long time for me to stick to the same setup. I've been through numerous different trucks with numerous different campers, all kinds of different setups, and one year is by far the longest that I've stuck to the same setup. So what exactly about this setup is it that made this the rig that stuck? Is it truly the dream rig, the perfect rig? or was it just the fact that I was sick of switching around setups so often? Or was it a combination of both? To be honest, I can't quite answer that right now, but I can tell you that after spending a year in the same setup, I do have enough of an opinion to really think about what the pros and the cons are for a setup like this. And I thought that it would be an interesting video to relay some of those pros and cons to you guys. Some of the things that I like, some of the things that really work, some of the things that I dislike. Maybe in the end I'll even talk about if this is the setup that I envision myself staying in long term into the future. But without further ado, let's just get into the one year review of my rig. So to start, let's just talk about what the setup even is. This is a 2000 Ford F350, and the camper is a 1999 Northern Light Classic Series 9.6 basement model. It's a fiberglass camper. It's a two-piece clamshell design. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Before we get into the details of the camper, let's just quickly talk about the truck itself. As I just mentioned, this is a 2000 Ford F350. This particular model has a 7.3 liter power stroke diesel engine. It's a four wheel drive, single rear wheel axle, eight foot bed. It's got manual locking hubs in the front, limited slip differential in the rear. Um, and it's just a, it's a beast of a heavy duty pickup truck. Now, the reason that I wanted this specific truck is A, I couldn't afford a newer diesel truck, and B, the 7.3 liter power stroke is well known for its reliability, its simplicity, its longevity. There's plenty of examples of these specific engines making it to a million miles, which is absolutely insane, and that's why I went for a 7.3 power stroke. Now, I also wanna point out that I did opt for an extended cab truck instead of the four full doors, and the reason is because the four full door models with the eight foot bed is just so long, in my opinion, it's like driving a school bus or something. So I wanted to keep it a little bit more compact. Now, do you wanna say that my experience with this truck so far has been pretty good? I got the truck at about 200,000 miles. It's now got 227,000 miles. Right off the bat, I had to rebuild the transmission, which kind of sucked, but at the same time, any heavy duty truck that's made to tow and haul really heavy loads is gonna need a new transmission at some point. So since I hit the 200,000 mile mark, I decided that I was just gonna replace it right off the bat so that way I didn't have to worry about it. Or it got rebuilt, not replaced. But along the way, I've also replaced front wheel hub assemblies. I've done a steering dampener. I've changed all of the brakes all the way around. I put a new water pump in. I, I put a new steering box. You know, odds and ends here and there. It has definitely cost me some money and time to maintain this truck, but overall it it's been solid, it's been reliable. It got me on a cross country road trip, never had any issues along that trip. So my experience so far has been that it's been a really solid truck and I really do like having the heavy duty one ton pickup truck to haul a truck camper. I'm sure some people are gonna ask, so I'm just gonna quickly go over the wheels and tires. These are 285-75 E range 10 ply tires. They're the Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws. I've ran them on several different rigs and I've had no issues, no complaints. They perform great off-road, they perform great on-road, they're not too loud, um, they do really well in snow, and uh, they've been solid tires. Before we get into the actual review, I just wanna give you guys a very quick, brief tour of the camper itself. Starting over here on this side of the camper, we've got my propane cubby. I have two 20-pound propane tanks in there. This is the water fill-up. This is where you plug in to get the battery charged up. 
and I will point out that I'm using these torque lift fast gun tie downs to hold the camper down onto the truck. They also have the torque lift frame mounted camper tie downs. These are probably the best option you could get. They bolt through the frame, no welding involved. Super easy install, super secure. And these fast guns are definitely also the best that you could get. Moving on, we have a city water where you hook up a hose if you wanna have city water. Um, this is like for cable or something, have never used that. Outdoor shower, and in here is where you have all of the fun stuff to empty the toilet or the holding tanks and all of that. And the steps that I'm using are the torque lift scissor steps. These came with the camper. They're also pretty expensive, so they do have a lock as well. So these steps are pretty great, but they aren't the best option that I've seen. The newer models have like a porch, so there's like kind of like a metal porch that comes across the bottom of the camper there that you could go out and step onto. And it also has these steps that kind of just easily just like fold out really simply. Whereas with these, these are scissor steps. You have to like unlatch them and then pull them. And it's not a big deal, but when you're getting in and out of the camper, especially in like parking lots and stuff, it is kind of annoying. So that's definitely one complaint that I have. But other than that, they are really great steps. Over on this side, we have my battery storage compartment. I've just got a single Dakota Lithium 100 amp hour battery. We could talk a little bit more about my power setup later on. Down underneath the camper here, I do want to point out that this was not a stock factory option, but the previous owner added this PVC pipe, which holds my sewage hose, which is actually really clutch to have it set up like this because I believe if you don't have it here, it originally gets stored in here, which I've heard is just kind of a pain to have to deal with. Over on this side, we don't really have much going on. There's the propane vent here and the fridge vent. These are electric camper jacks. I will say that one of the absolute biggest advantages of this camper over all of the other campers that I've had are the electric camper jacks. They are a complete game changer. You could take the camper on and off so, so easily. I could literally have this thing off of the truck in like 15 minutes. And same thing with loading it. About 15 minutes, it's already on the truck. Electric jacks, game changer, would highly recommend them. So over here on the right side, we have the dinette and some storage up there. The dinette actually turns into a bed if you need it to, which is pretty convenient. And I really like this style of dinette where it's off to the side as opposed to some of the other campers. Super spacious. And on this side of the camper, we've got more storage up top over here. Another full cabinet here that I put some shelves in. Down below here, we have a kitchen. It's not that much counter space, but it does have this thing which opens up the counter space a bit more. I changed the faucet. This is a faucet that I got off of Amazon just to replace the old one. I installed this shelf here. We've got a three burner stove, great for cooking, and the oven. The oven is a game changer. I have absolutely loved having the oven. Down below there, got some more storage cabinets there. Got a bunch of plugs. This is the switch for the water heater. And I've got a Olympian Wave 3 catalytic heater that was already installed when I got the camper. I use this when it's not that cold out and I don't need it to get that toasty in here. Fire extinguisher over there. This is a huge appeal for a lot of people and it is a bathroom. So I've got a toilet. I use the toilet fairly regularly. Um, I've only used, I've only used the shower in here once and it's pretty small space to take a shower comfortably. So you can if you really have to, but I don't typically take showers in there. So I've got some storage there, I've got storage there, storage here, underneath this right here, which I'm not gonna take out, that's where the water tank is. I believe it's like a 27 gallon water tank, but I'm not completely sure. This is just some fresh water that I carry, a little waste basket. And over on this side, I've got a propane fridge. It runs off of propane or shore power if you're plugged in. It was actually not the original one. The previous owner replaced this like two years ago maybe. Um, and it works great. It's highly efficient. And got a big cabinet in there. Also have a radio with speakers also put in by 
the previous owner, not me. And up here I have a roof fan. I believe this is a Dometic roof fan. It's not the Fantastic fans. And up here we have the bedroom. If you'll notice, this is a east-west bed orientation. A lot of the bigger campers are north-south. This east-west has been fine for me. Um, I've got some storage cabinets over there. And I also have a TV that I utilize pretty often, which you guys might be aware of if you watch my videos. Last but not least, I've got another vent over here. And this one's actually like an escape hatch. Ugh. So in the event of emergency, if I really needed to get out of here in a hurry, I could hop out of here. Um, or if I want a nice view in the morning. While I'm up here, I might as well show you what the roof looks like. As you can see, nothing fancy. This is not a Starlink. I know it kind of looks like one. Unfortunately, it's just like a TV satellite, which I think is hilarious because I've, I've never used it. It was already on the camper when I bought it. But these two black covers are actually really nifty. These basically allow your vents to stay open even when it's raining and you don't have to worry about water getting in because these basically just block anything from getting down into the vents when you're driving or when they're open. I was trying to keep this video kind of on the brief side, which I realized that at this point, it's probably getting past that point. So I'm gonna keep the review portion of this video rather short and brief as much as possible. Now I've had this for a little bit, just over a year, like I said, is it the perfect rig? No, it's not the perfect rig. No rig is the perfect rig. Is it the perfect rig for me? Honestly, I don't know. I couldn't say definitively that it is the perfect rig for me, but there are definitely some things that I have found that have been extremely beneficial. Let's break this down into two parts. First, we're going to talk about the Northern Light fiberglass truck camper specifically, and then we're going to talk about truck camper rigs in general as a whole. Now, the Northern Light truck camper, made out of fiberglass obviously, clamshell design, two pieces of fiberglass mold basically get put together like a clamshell without going too far into detail, the fiberglass shell is laminated onto rigid insulation panels. For the most part, it's just a fiberglass exterior and that has some tremendous benefits. Obviously, since there aren't so many different seams where aluminum sheets connect, um, there's just so many less points that water could get in, so many less points that water damage can occur. That doesn't mean that it's non-existent. Of course, the fiberglass design is better than the aluminum and wood, in my opinion, but any place that there's a cutout, where, whether it's the windows or any of the spots where there's like, you know, things that get mounted onto the outside, you still have to maintain all of those seams. You still have to go around and make sure all of, all of the sealant is good. I think a lot of people have the misconception that it's fiberglass, it doesn't leak. I've talked to people who are like, oh no, I don't, I don't, I never reseal it. I never try to cover it in the rain or anything because they think that it just doesn't leak. And that's just false. But anywho, fiberglass, that's the huge benefit of the Northern Light is that it's fiberglass. It's not really much lighter than other campers, contrary to the name Northern Light. And I think a lot of people kind of assume that since it's fiberglass, it weighs less, but they still weigh a lot, okay? This camper, I actually haven't gotten it weighed, but it's, I believe, around 2,100, 2,200 pounds dry. So it's probably close to 3,000 pounds when it's fully loaded up with water and propane and everything. Uh, give or take a little bit. Another benefit of the Northern Light truck camper is everything has just worked. Everything is high quality. These are not cheap campers. If you were to buy a brand new one, it costs a lot of money. So that being said, even though it's a camper from 1999, everything has just worked. All of the different components just work. And at the end of the day, I think that's one of the main reasons why I've just stuck to the same camper. I haven't really changed anything. I've just used it as it is because everything works. And I know this is kind of superficial, but I think another benefit of the Northern Light is that it just looks really good. These campers are timeless. Even one as old as this looks really good and it looks really high tech and advanced. And to me, that's certainly a benefit. Now, some of the downsides of a fiberglass camper are, first of all, um, and I, to me, this is the biggest downside, is there's the potential for uh, fiberglass 
bulges. And my camper actually has some bulging on the sides. I see it all the time in not just the older campers, but a lot of the newer ones as well will kind of bulge at certain points in the camper. And what is happening is the fiberglass delaminates from the structural uh, insulation. And since it delaminates, it kind of just is off to the side and that in turn leads to bulging. Now, from my experience, it hasn't really affected the overall usability. It hasn't affected the structural integrity, but I'm no expert. I know that some people probably would argue that once you have delamination going on, it's hugely important to fix it. But I think that it depends on where that delamination is occurring and where you're getting the warping or the fiberglass bulging. But that's just a huge drawback to the fiberglass campers because once that happens, it is a big project to fix that issue. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. The next thing is just mounting things on the exterior just seems a little bit a little bit more tricky than it is on like a wooden camper. Since it's fiberglass, you gotta really be mindful that you're not screwing down too hard, that you're using proper sealants, that you're really just being careful not to kind of rough it that much. Cause once the fiberglass cracks, it's a lot more of a nuisance to fix that or repair that. But that's it. That's basically all of the downsides about a fiberglass truck camper. Pretty much everything is superior with the fiberglass camper, but there are just a couple little nuanced things to keep in mind. All right, now we can talk about truck campers as a whole. There's some huge pros to them, and there's also some huge cons. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about hard-sided truck campers like this one, not pop-up truck campers, because I've never owned a pop-up truck camper, so I can't talk about them. Truck campers are great. Some of the obvious benefits of a truck camper are you have a four wheel drive truck. Four wheel drive truck can get you a lot further into the backcountry, get you a lot further through snow, and it's just a very robust platform. So that's a huge benefit. The second huge benefit is that you have a little cabin or home or whatever you wanna call it on the back of your truck. So that provides a lot of comfort. I mean, the fact that you could drive all day in your truck, get out, come into the back, and it's just like a little home, it's awesome. If you're in the back country, if you're in places like this, it's just so nice to have an actual little home with you wherever you go. So that's a huge benefit as well. And in my opinion, the fact that it's separated from the driving area is also a benefit as well. If you're somebody who's very scared about having to leave in the middle of the night, then it's probably not the rig for you because there's not really a good way to get from the, ca the camper into the truck. So that's a benefit for some people. It might be a negative for others. The reason I think it's a benefit is just because it creates that separation from like, oh, I'm now in the camper. I'm now in my home as opposed to when you're in the truck, it just feels like you're in a truck. You don't even you kind of forget that you have your home on the back of the truck there. Another huge benefit of the truck camper is you can remove the camper from the truck and then you could use your truck for truck stuff. You gotta go to the hardware store, you gotta help your mom, your cousin, your neighbor move something, uh, you have your truck bed. If you're gonna be posting up in camp at, a, at the same spot for a while, you could take the camper off of the truck, leave it there, and then you have your truck. You can just drive around and you have your camper. So it's kind of like a home base. But yeah, those are, I think those are the main benefits to consider. You have quite a bit of space in these campers. There's quite a bit of storage, depending on your specific camper. There's all kinds of cool bells and whistles that you could get. You know, I have a freaking oven in here. I can make pizzas and whatnot and cake. There's a bathroom and it's just crazy. It's, it's comfortable. It's really, really comfortable. And this camper for me has just worked. Of course, no rig is perfect, this being no exception. So let's just go over some of the huge drawbacks of a hard-sided truck camper. The first one is it's huge. I mean, these are big rigs. These are not small, compact little vans. And at the end of the day, you know, the drivability is, it's fine, you get used to it. I could drive this around the city if I needed to, but it's, it's not ideal. Maneuvering through smaller parking lots or parking lots in general isn't fun. And driving on the highway during high wind scenarios is not fun. That size also extremely hinders its ability to go 
off-road and get into the backcountry. I talked about how having a four-wheel drive truck is more capable and it allows you to get further out into the backcountry. If I'm being honest, it's still extremely limited. Any kind of trail that's slightly off cambered, I just avoid. I'm not gonna risk tipping over or getting stuck. You know, a lot of these trails don't have much space to turn around. You don't have much space to just kind of maneuver. And this is a big rig and it's a very high center of gravity. So you really just can't push it that far, unfortunately. Now, if you do take the camper off at camp, cool, you have a truck, you go off road, but that's definitely something to consider. It's been countless times that I've stumbled upon what looked like really cool roads that got me to like a really cool fishing spot or hiking spot or whatever. And I had to just turn around cause I didn't want to risk it. So that's definitely a huge consideration before getting a hard sided truck camper. Now I would imagine a pop-up truck camper is a lot better than that in that regard. But again, I've never had one, so I don't know. And lastly, I know that I talked about this as a benefit, but I would also argue that this for me is a huge con as well. And that's the comfortability. Like this is so comfortable. I have a couch, I have all of the amenities that I can need. And yes, that it's nice to have that, but also I've noticed that within this year of owning this camper, I have been a lot more reluctant to push myself and to challenge myself to embrace the elements outside. I just haven't done as much of that because I'm always like, oh, I have my nice comfortable house right here. Why would I, why would I go out and camp, you know, up the trail on snowshoes when I can just snowshoe and then come back to my warm camper with a furnace. And I know that sounds kind of controversial and crazy to some people, but I'm a pretty young guy, I like to think. And I, I like the idea of going through a little bit of discomfort every now and then. Do I enjoy it? Yes. Do I want to enjoy that level of comfort at the stage that I am in my life? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, camping is about being outside, right? Camping is about enjoying, enjoying the elements, enjoying the beauty of the world and being out. That's why you're out in the first place. So when I go to a place that's super pretty and I realize that I have spent more time just chilling inside in the camper, watching TV, you know, it's a little bit of a disappointment. All right, and the last thing that I wanna go over is just some of the benefits of this specific camper and the setup inside and whatnot. The oven, hugely, hugely awesome addition. It's definitely been nice to bake actual like frozen pizzas or different dishes that required baking like lasagnas. And this whole stove and oven have just worked perfectly. I've never had any issues. And uh, you guys know I like to cook, so that is a huge benefit. I already talked about the TV, having the TV, Pretty nice, it's pretty nice. So the propane fridge is a bit, it seems a bit outdated to a lot of people probably, but the propane is highly, highly efficient. And one of the best things about this that I have really enjoyed is the fact that I don't need much battery power at all. The only thing that I need battery power for are my lights and the water pump. Everything else is propane, which obviously, you know, could be, could be a little bit more dangerous, but, there's pros and cons to everything, right? Oh yeah, I did wanna talk about the east-west bed orientation as opposed to the north-south. The benefit of the east-west bed is that the camper doesn't hang out over the cab as much, it's not as long. So that not only does that reduce weight, but it also just makes the drivability a little less, a little less wonky, in my opinion, a little bit easier to drive. And I've really enjoyed it, you know? It's a queen, I have a double, a double size bed in here, and that has been plenty of space for me. And then having the cabinets over here has been great. I will say, I've seen some of the other truck campers that have a north, south orientation and it is cool that they have like a lot more cabinets for more storage which if i'm being honest i don't even fill up all the cabinets in here for storage but if i ever like lived in a rig then having more storage would be nice of course so one thing that i would really like to change about this rig is the battery system as i briefly mentioned earlier i've got a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery which for my purposes it's been it's been pretty solid. Like I said, I don't really use that much electricity in here. So I haven't needed 
a robust battery system. And I do carry a gas generator, a Honda EU 2200i. So when I am on longer trips and I do need to recharge the battery, I just fire up the generator and plug it in, which works. It's not the most ideal. In the future, it would be cool to, you know, add more battery capacity, maybe like two, 300 amps, add solar panels, add a DC to DC charger, but it is a lot of money, it's expensive, and I'm limited on funds. So I've just been rocking it as it is, and it has worked out for me. So what is the verdict? Is this the perfect rig? Is this the dream rig? Is this everything I ever needed in a rig? No, but it's been an amazing rig. I have very little complaints. It has served its purpose very well. It's got to me to where I wanna go. It's provided comfort, security along the way, and there's a lot of good things about this truck camper setup. I hope that this was a little, whoops, my battery just died. But as I was saying, I hope that this was a little bit informative. I hope that you gained some knowledge or insight or information that you find useful. If there are any more questions that you guys have specifically, feel free to drop a comment down below. I will be trying to respond to as many specific questions that you guys have as possible. Oh, I realized that I never answered. Is this going to be the rig that I'm keeping long into the future? I don't know, I honestly couldn't say. I think that I'm getting to the point where my mind is starting to think about other options out there, but at the end of the day, a rig is a rig. Whatever vehicle, whatever vehicle you have, it's just made to help supplement the adventures that you go on. That is the heart and soul of why we do the things that we do, the adventures. Right? So whether that's a truck camper, a van, a Toyota Prius, whatever it is, if it helps to supplement you in the types of adventures that you wanna be going on, at the end of the day, I think that is what is important. Even though I know it's very easy to get caught up into all the different rigs and modifications and gear and all of that cool fun stuff. I'm just gonna stop now. Thank you guys like always for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.